You're an embarrassment to Florida, sir. You're an embarrassment to the United States. Thanks for the way that we legislate. No, I'm that really concerned that more people are going to die because they don't have health care. That's what I'm really concerned about. I'm just right. curious, like, yeah. uh, the reconciliation package that's going yeah. through, it's not going to make it through the Senate. And if it does, it totally changes the way that we govern things. So I do feel bad for people who die, but it's not necessarily because they're uninsured, because everyone still has access to care by going to the emergency room or what have you. But you're not if you have cancer. They're not going to give the chemotherapy in the emergency room. Is there any concern that with the way that we're putting in this sort of overarching insurance plan through the exchanges or what have you that's regulated by HHS and all sorts of things that we're kind of stifling innovation in well, the market? Well, the innovation to deny people care because they have a pre-existing condition. The innovation to charge women 50% more than men. Women Did have you? different medical needs than men. But should they have to pay 50% more than men? But have, we're, we need more medical care than men. We can't change that. So are we supposed to be treated preferentially because we're different? And I, I, I think we should be treated... Well, I mean, men I'm, commit more crimes than women, and yet everybody pays the same tax rate, men or women, you know? Yes, but I don't think that I should get special care because I have... I don't think that I should only have to pay as much as a man, even though I need more medical stuff. I'm willing to pay more because I know that I was born a certain way, and, and you can't change the, those sorts of differences. Many small businesses won't hire women because the insurance costs more than it does for men. How is that fair to you? Well, I think it's sort of erroneous to think that insurance is health care. And quite frankly, the insurance, going through the insurance, trying to say everyone needs insurance, doesn't actually affect care. And so we're kind of going at this backwards. I've it does for all the people who don't have coverage. But that's not true. They get different care. But the type of coverage you're giving them, enrolling 15 million people into Medicaid, is that really good coverage? You're offering people suboptimal coverage. And you're saying you're insuring so many more people. And I just don't, I mean, you're, it, it's, it's... Most of the people who will now be insured will be insured through private insurance, not through 15, Medicaid. There are 32 million people who are supposed to be insured through this bill. You really, yeah. 15 I, I million, have to give you credit. You really 15 know a lot million are, are going to be enrolled onto Medicaid. Yeah. And, and actually, if you look at the growth in, if you look at the growth in the, uh, the uninsured from now until, I guess, 2019, the end of the budget window, that growth has more to do with the, uh, people being dropped from Medicaid than it does uh, actual private insurance is expanding at a rate that would insure more people. So I don't see why we're... That's not true. If more Every year, more and more people don't have insurance. The number's gone up by 10 million in the past 10 years. But if you look at the composite of the people who are uninsured, there are a portion of them who deserve insurance. And the pre-existing condition is a problem that should be dealt with in, in there is a way to deal with that, and Congress has a role in that. But this legislation, you're talking about telling people that they have to have coverage? It's, is that really it's what... It's $395. No, it's $750, because the $395 is not going to make it through. And despite the fact of how low the amount is... Do you really feel like you could tell me that I have to have insurance? Would you as a congressman tell me Let's face that it. I have if to have insurance? If you get hit by a bus and you don't have insurance, you're going to go to the emergency room. That's just reality. Now the question is who's going to pay for that? Are you going to have no responsibility to pay for that or are you going to have but to pay for it $95? But see, you're, there, I, I, hospitals come up with payment plans, and they used to before legislation got so entrenched and regulation got so entrenched. We've created this huge umbrella that Congress can take care of everything because that, they have this unlimited problem. Book, it seems sort of well you have to do when, when you change one thing you sometimes have to change another thing for instance if you did say insurance companies cannot deny people care because of pre conditions some people would be tempted to only get a policy when they got sick HHS is going to decide what is allowed to be offered in these exchanges. I personally, what if I would like to have just catastrophic insurance? And I would prefer to pay all of my other medical expenses on my own. There'll be and, four and, levels, and one of them but, will be something along the lines of what you're describing. See, the, the bottom level will be what you're describing. But the problem is you're making me choose care that I don't want, that I don't agree with even, even in the, in the bronze plan. There, are, you're, yeah. you're saying that I have to go, to, I have to find an insurance that gives me certain specific doctors I can go see and such like that, whereas I have no freedom over my health dollars. But I don't listen, get to say I want to go to this doctor honestly, or that doctor or I, this doctor to take care of my cancer. I respect what you're saying, but there's no freedom to be sick. There's no freedom to die. There's no freedom yes, to live under 
a bridge. As, as, as Anatole France said, the, the law in its majesty lets both, forbids both the rich and the poor to sleep under bridges. That's not the kind of freedom people want. Freedom, the people don't want the freedom to die. They just don't. That's not human nature. So you want us to be just subservient to the state? No. Because that's essentially that's what we That's not what this bill we, does. We end up in grace. Or maybe I should give somebody else. Right, you, you I will tell you, you are an amazing. I, I believe this is a constituent of yours from you Florida. Are an amazing but I would still really person. appreciate it if you would <laughs> if you would tell me yes. that I have to have insurance. Everyone has to be responsible for the consequences but of their own But that's not actions, what I'm asking. I want you to tell me that I have to have insurance because that's what I'm this bill is for doing. I would like you to it's say that I have you're to you're have just playing insurance. With me at this point. It's it's just a personal thing. Okay, well, I would sorry, appreciate. But, so, you know, so I will assume that that's what your vote means, but I would prefer to be in the news. So, but I'm sorry to monopolize this time. My name is Lydia. Okay, just give your name to my staff. You seem like a really I'm serious. You're very bright, interesting person, and you've got, you've given a lot of thought. I do appreciate your questions that yes. you had for, um, what was it, one of the Treasury Secretary people. Yeah, Ben Bernanke? No, no, it was one of the lower level people that oh, didn't understand where the Elizabeth money went. Coleman. Yes. Elizabeth Coleman. Yes. That is the most, that is the so most, thank, pop, you. thank you, uh -huh. that is the most popular yeah. congressional yeah. video on YouTube. Three million people yes, have seen yes. that. Yes. Speak honestly. Speak honestly. Yeah. It's what the people want to hear. So yeah. I appreciate you coming yeah. down here. I'm sorry.